Okay, so what I want to take a look at here is how do we go about beginning to build a website inside of Adobe Dreamweaver? How do we start with the design inside of Photoshop and move on over to Dreamweaver and build this out with HTML and CSS? To begin, we want to think about dividing everything into div tags. So as I look at my Photoshop layout, I can see that I begin, I have my navbar slash header, I have an image box, and then when I come to this middle region right here, I actually have a two column layout. Now, uh, I have my left column, and then inside of my right column, I have yet another two column layout. So we can see that we can work with background images and div tags to really create an overall layout. So here goes, step one, always when building a website inside a Dreamweaver is come in and create your folder. So I come to File, New Folder, and I'm going to name it Camera Website. There I have it. Step two, I open up Adobe Dreamweaver. And again, so much of building a website is about file management. So I'm going to actually create my site and let Dreamweaver know where the files for this site will be. So I'm going to come to Site, and I'm going to say New Site. And I'm going to give it a name, Camera Website. And now I'm going to come on in and I am going to find where that all is. So I hit choose, I hit save, and there we have it. Wonderful. Next step, creating my first page. I come to file, I come to new, and I'm going to create my first page, HTML5. I hit create. This will be my index page. I'll come file, save as, I'm going to name, always name my home page index making sure that everything for this site will be in the index page. I hit save. Now, I'm going to come on over to Photoshop and take a look and decide what's what. Okay, as I come and look, I have my logo. Now, if I don't have my logo out yet, I can actually bring it out. I'm going to show you a really great way to bring this on out. So I have a lot of guides pulled out. And as I come on through, I can see that I can turn things on and off. And I'm going to you know, start to take a look here and see what we have. Here's my circle. Okay, I can actually turn off the background and the image. Okay, here we go. All right, so now if I want to bring this out, what I can do is I can come and I can slice it. Now, probably you'll have it in another way as well, but you can always come in and slice your images to bring them out. So let's take a look. What do I want to slice? What do I want to bring? Well, I'm going to start with the top up in here, and I'm going to come on in and I'm going to go to my crop tool. Actually, I'm going to come on in here and I'm going to find the slice tool. Okay, so when you first come over to your slice, if you don't see it, make sure that you have your workspace set on graphic and web. Okay, so I come on in, I grab my slice tool, and I'm just going to come and I'm going to slice this image right here. Now, I'm going to come, I'm going to say file, and I'm going to say export, save for web. And what I'm going to do, and you can do this with your site however you'd like to, and you want to click, and I'm going to save this as a PNG because I want the transparency. And what I am going to do is I'm going to hit save and then I'm going to actually put it into my file. I'm going to come into my documents where I put this, my camera website. Now, what I want to say is I only want the selected slices. I'm going to hit save and I hope I selected that. I'm not sure. And now I should have this slice in my page. So I go to camera website and here I can see this image here and I can see it's 185 by 146. So you can really go through and turn things on and off on your site and get your images into your folders. So let me go through and work on that just a little bit here. So and then they're actually the size that you want them to be as well. So I'm going to come back in and I can clear my slices. So I come to view, I come to clear slices. I come back to my layers and I actually can take a look even at the social media that I put on my page. I could slice that out as well.
I'll go do that as I move through. I'm going to go on back. Actually, before I do that, I want to actually sample what is the color of my background. So I come on in, turn everything back on. And I'm going to grab my eyedropper and I'm going to sample. I'm going to see I have my color right in here. 566152. 566152. 566. And it's kind of one of those. Um, I'm not going to worry so much exactly. 566152. I'm going to write that down so I can use it in my next thing here. So now I'm going to come on in Dreamweaver. Oh, but I can also come in and get a sense of what size, what's the height of this. And sometimes I'll just grab my rectangular cart marquee tool and I'm just going to come on in. And I can see, okay, the height is about one inch. All right. I'm not going to worry so much about the width. Actually, I can get the width by coming to image, image size, and I can see that my design is 1600 pixels across. So here it goes. I come on into Dreamweaver. I'm going to insert my navbar slash header. So I'm going to come to insert. I'm going to say insert a div tag. I want it to be at the beginning here. I'm going to do a new CSS rule. I want it to be an ID because there's only going to be one. Now, I'm going to actually give it the name header header nav bar. Okay, because these are these are together. That's why I'm going to just use a div tag. Okay, new style sheet. If you decide to use header, that's fine too inside of the insert. Uh, really, they're all just div tags and we're just creating boxes. So I'm going to hit OK. New style sheet. Oh, he's creating a new style sheet going through these steps. I'm going to hit save and I'm going to create my box. And again, I totally forgot what everything was. My width was 1600 pixels across and I'm going to put my height in again. It's about 72 pixels per inch. I'm going to go for 80 and I want it to uh, do auto for the right and the left. So it is centered right and left is auto. And I'm going to give a background color and I totally forget what I said it was. Again, I'm going to come back into Photoshop, grab my eyedropper, double, actually I'll double click. 566152, 566152, 566152, 566152. I have my color. All right, and that's definitely more gray. I'm going to go back and sample and decide. But again, this is the kind of stuff you can change. Now, I'm going to come to my type as well. My type color is white. So one, two, three, four, five, six for my Fs. Okay, set that. Now, I'm going to come on in too, and I believe that my font was set to Georgia. So now it's always when we come in and we take a look at our type. Right, I, just, I just created a new one. I didn't want to do that. I'm going to come to Window, to History. I'm going to come on down here. Okay. And I come to my Welcome tool. So I'm like 100% sure that this is set at Georgia. So I just keep creating new types. So I'm going to, and I can see there we have Georgia. So I'm going to come on in. I'm going to set my font family. Now, this is the story with the font family. You will have, you will choose from several. Okay, so when you're looking at the body of your text, uh, you are limited to whatever the person has. The site will render based on the font that the person has installed on their computer. Now, so if you have a font that's a design element, export it as an image, as a PNG, a JPEG, a GIF, a GIF, uh, or use a web font, a Google web font. Okay, so there we have it. I'll come back in, come to Photoshop. What was the size of my font? It was set to about 14 points. So let's come on into here. Let's go to 14. Let's set it from pixels to points. Let's hit OK. Let's hit OK. All right, and we have the very beginning here. Yay! Now, of course, this looks much different because this one has an image behind it. Now, and I can work on all of that as well, but this is how we're going to get started moving through. Now, this is the story too, the whole, when you look at my design inside a dream, inside of Photoshop, the opacity is lowered. Okay, so there's a really great site, www.css3info, and I'm gonna come on in and I'm gonna come and I'm gonna take a look at opacity. Now, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just come and look this all up um, because although Dreamweaver helps you write the code, 
um, sometimes we actually need to go in and take a look and see what's what. All right, so if we want to come in and we want to lower the opacity, um, then we can come on in and we can take a look inside of CSS3 info. Now we could also do another search and we could say lower, we could just come in opacity. There's a lot of really good places for this. Opacity CSS3. All right, and this is another really great place is going to W3 schools. And here we can come on in and we can see all that I need to do is I'm going to set it like this. So try yourself. Here we go. I want to just take this line. I'm going to take these two lines. I'm going to take these two lines. Um, one, two, these two. Edit, copy, and I'm going to come on back to Dreamweaver. And I'm going to actually go directly to this page right here. And I'm going to actually, I'm going to put it after the background color going right into my CSS file, save all. Now I want to actually view it. So I'm going to come to file. All right, good. And I can see actually the opacity is lower. Now it just looks gray right now, but it will be different once I put an image behind it. Okay. So from here, I'm going to continue to work using my Photoshop page as my reference building out div tags and placing images in. I've just started with creating the shape and the color of my navbar slash header. So you can follow along um, to see how I continue to do this and also go back and take a look at videos on creating div tags and using left and right columns. Thanks so much.